Lauren, I remember, I think it was 2006, when you guys made your first finals in um, the CBT. I remember ringing you up on the phone from my radio studio and telling you guys you were the lead story on Channel 7 that night ahead of the Broncos, Lions, and it was like a bunch of giggly schoolgirls. It was just so refreshing for me at the time as a sports journo. Things have changed a lot. Everyone's become a lot more so-called professional. How has it changed for you down through the years, seeing what's happened in these past couple of weeks? I think from a player's point of view, it hasn't changed at all. I can um, remember that game very clearly in my mind. We were staying at the Crown Plaza in Melbourne, and I remember us all coming down the escalators and seeing that we were live on TV, and I just remember the feeling amongst the girls and how excited that we felt, um, and it's been exactly the same this week. I think, um, honestly, the determination um, and the desire is perhaps there a little bit more than what it was then um, we kind of had, we wanted to win and we wanted it badly but I think this this year in particular it's gone to a whole new level and that's shown in you know the games where we've sort of come from behind and, and we've had some challenging games you know you look at the season and go oh we've had all these wins but they haven't been easy and you know we've come from behind but we've also controlled matches so we have a little bit more confidence in our ability I think that's another key difference. You've done that famous thing we always talk about in the other, other sports day haven't you? You've won ugly at times yeah, and very it's really ugly. It's really important though, isn't it? Yeah, we've certainly had some scrappy games throughout the season and, and like I've said before, you know, the most pleasing thing is regardless of the win or the performance, we've always sat down and analysed our performances individually and as a team and I don't think anyone's been satisfied and think that they've played an awesome game. You know, there's been a lot of great individual performances and that's come with Geitze winning the, you know, the car this year and Nat just being announced as the ANZ player, which is fantastic. And those individual um, recognition is, is great, but the bottom line is that it's been the team performance and the team sticking together on court that has got us through those tough games and you know those individual accolades are fantastic but I know both girls would swap both of those things to have the trophy in the hand tomorrow. What's different this year? Oh, so many things, but I think it really just comes down to the desperation that we've had to do well, and things have just clicked for us. I don't, how else do you describe that in sport? You know, we struggled in a lot of games last year, but we managed to keep the core group together, and I think that's really the most important thing. And pre-season this year, we talked about what we wanted to achieve, and things have just really gelled, and I don't know how else to explain it than that. But we've always been a very close team. It's not like there's been any dramatic differences off the court. Um, you know, we, we do a lot together. We enjoy each other's company and it's really a very special group of people to be a part of and, and it's just we've been able to take it to another level this year. Any coverage at home in Loxton? Oh, I don't know actually, I hope so. I know a lot of people back in South Australia and generally and my family and a lot of friends will be watching closely and you know it, it is where I've come from but I do truly feel like a Queenslander now, I've been here long enough and I couldn't be happier or prouder to lead such an amazing group of people. Do you, do, is there any chance that you guys may have played your grand final against the Magic or do you truly believe you've got that next level to go up? I truly believe we've got another level to go up to and, and you know, the, again in the Magic game there were patches of brilliance and you watch the yeah. play and you just think wow how did the girls do that and, but there was also some patches that were not pretty and, um, and the girls all recognise that and you know um, the nerves were there before the game and it took us a while to settle in um, and I think we learn a little bit from that in our preparation tomorrow and keeping everybody calm and just treating it like any other game and Apart from you know the media this week, it really has been business as usual, and I know the girls are just absolutely keen to get out there and, and prove that you know we are capable and we're here for a reason, and we don't want to go with all these wins and then lose the big one because you know all those wins mean they mean nothing now. How good has that been? Though? I mean, you know, the, the media coverage. I mean, you know, there's those of us that have been around for years, but you know, we've only got so much pull, as they say, and we can go so far. All of a sudden, the television cameras are here. Some of the radio stations again. And, I mean, how big has that been for the playing group in general? It's, it's just been amazing, and we talked about that, actually, sort of in the lead-up to the semi-final when there was a lot more media. And, mm. you know, a lot of the girls enjoy doing it, and some not so much, but we all sat down and said, you know, this is really important not only for our team but for netball in Queensland. And yeah. as ambassadors for our sport, we want to put it out there and we want people to know about, you know, what you can achieve by playing a sport that you love, and that's important to us. So I know I can speak on behalf of the girls when they've done everything possible to do interviews, to do photos and just to get it out there we want people to to recognize and know the firebirds and, and be a part of this huge success that we've had so far I know I'm often accused of asking the big picture things t a little too often but to me tomorrow 
is even more important than you guys winning a grand final. There is the whole women's sport issue of coverage. Um, you know, the Courier Mail have been great, but they still have you in the local sport tab instead of your own tab. You yeah. Know? Little things like that. How important, really, do you think is tomorrow in terms of all of that? Um, could well, it, without could it be putting, a point? Oh, it absolutely could be, and without putting too much extra pressure on the girls, yeah. um, uh, hopefully a win tomorrow will mean so many bigger, greater things for us. And and whether that's sponsors, whether that's you know those little things like having um, our own netball section on the online, all those things that I think you know women have just been wanting to have for so long. So it lifts the profile of our team, but women's sport in general in Queensland, I think you know girls hockey, all other sports would yeah. just sit back and go, wow, those girls have come so far from you know the old CBT days we had the replay game late at night or early in the morning on um, ABC TV we've come a long way but it's really nice that we've got those supporters that were there back you know 10 years ago that are still sort of coming along and and then obviously a lot of new people as well but I think um, we've got a really grounded group of girls and we're all very appreciative of anything that we can do but obviously the work that the media is putting out there for us. Your knee, where are we at with that at the moment? Um, well, it's just a start, but you know, what's, what's the problem? What, what are we looking forward to here? Um, well, I had my surgery. Um, Peter Myers was the name that everybody mentioned, and he was the guy that I wanted to see, and I was really happy with um, how my surgery went. It was uh, four weeks on Thursday just been. Um, so it's all going pretty slowly at the moment. I had the ACL reconstruction, but I also had some meniscus damage, which needed to be repaired. So I'm back at work this week, which yep. has um, been a bit of a challenge, but you know, getting back into normal life, and slowly starting to put a bit more weight on it. Um, at the six-week mark, I'm hoping to be able to walk without my crutches, six to eight weeks. It's all these small little targets that I think you need to break your rehab down into, otherwise it can get quite overwhelming. And then obviously on the bike and swimming and then back to running. Um, hopefully I'll be running and feeling good in the next three to four months. Um, I'll obviously work as hard as I can in the gym in the meantime and then you know get everything as strong as possible to start pre-season with the girls. That would be my aim, sort of around Christmas time to be back on court. What's different about it with the netball? We know, we hear about it all the time in the code of Australian football because it's that high, those three horrible letters, ACL, that we hear. We know it's Rico time. Um, leaps and bounds, they've come along now. I mean, the last can get you back in three months. Even traditional, they've got the rehab down to between six and nine. But yet, you can be a cyclist and do a knee and just keep going because your knee's only going in one direction. What are the differences in it to a netball with the stopping and the propping and everything? Oh, look, I mean, what are the I, to, me, to me, well, no, I haven't actually watched the footage of me doing my knee, but you see yeah. some people do their ACL and it's this big dramatic thing and you see their leg go out to the side and it's just yeah. hideous to watch. And to be honest, mine wasn't like that. It could be the simplest thing. You know, you could be walking in the shops and you slip on a, step -ry, a slippery step and your leg goes out the wrong way. It can be as simple as you that. You don't need so. to be watching the footage of it. <laughs> so, I mean, as far as netball goes, as I said, mine wasn't a big dramatic thing. I was running, I jumped for a ball that I've done millions of times. So, I, you know, it's an injury that happens, unfortunately, and it happens in netball, it happens a lot in football. But, you know, the percentages of it actually happening are really low, and it was just an unlucky time for me, obviously. And it's disappointing because it's such a big year for us. But, you know, it's sport and it happens, and I'm realistic. I could have done it at work. I could have done it anywhere. Um, but what I am learning from this is that it's going to come back bigger, better, stronger and, you know, working on the muscle strength to support the knee as much as possible. Well, that, that's the reason I asked the question because, I mean, obviously you have specific rules in netball which place greater stresses on your ankles and your knees. That stop yeah. sort of thing. Um, does that affect your rehab, the exercises that the doctors will make you do, all that sort of stuff? Um, um, I, a lot of what I'll be doing is really just strength building um, and making sure that your quad's nice and strong. But as I said, it's a freak thing. And, you know, some people, I don't know how, but have can actually play on once they've had ACL damage. I mean, everybody's different. And I think the most important message that um, my physio and surgeon have both said to me is don't compare yourself to other people because yep. every knee is different. Everybody's rehab is different. And you can't, like, it's frustrating if I don't get the targets that I want to get, but you also need to be realistic and think, oh, well, so that person was at that stage at that time but I'm here and I'm me and, you know, I, I, I'm trying not to compare myself to other people and I think that's important because otherwise it could be a very frustrating process. It's baby steps and, you know, even the other day, my actual target at the moment is in zero to six weeks um, to get my knee bent to 90 degrees um, and I was at the four-week mark on Thursday and I saw the physio and I got it to 85 degrees so I've got two weeks to get that extra five degrees. So, you know, those little things obviously generally wouldn't be a big deal but for me now um, with these little targets that means the world 
world and I know I feel so much <laughs> happier and more satisfied when I walk out of the physio knowing that I've reached those targets. Those milestones are important, are they? Aren't Absolutely. They? And I think even little rewards, like <laughs> I said to our physio, Mark, I said, you need to have some lollies here or something. If I get my, like, if I've got a little reward process, then, you know, it makes it that a little bit easier to achieve the goals. Tomorrow's game, what do you think the keys are? I mean, who, who are the matchups that we're looking at? Oh, there's honestly matchups all over the court. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Gatsi plays a huge role on Matu, but to me, probably one of the key matchups would maybe be um, Claire on Maria Tutaya. Yep. I think Maria has the ability to just pull out an amazing game, and I, when I think back to the Commonwealth Games gold medal game, I don't think I've ever seen her play as well. So hopefully she doesn't replicate that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Claire is, without a doubt, our tightest one-on-one defender. Um, so hopefully she can shut her down. But, you know, if we focus on too many little things like that, I think we will step away from the game plan. And as much as it's a defensive game and our defenders have had an awesome year, we need to keep attacking and we need to keep giving the ball to Nat and Romelda and obviously scoring the goals as often as we can. But it's going to be important that the team that settles first gets some goals on the board. We don't want to spend the game chasing. Um, so get out to a good start and really push it home. Will it be tight? I think it will be. Yeah, yep. I absolutely do. Um, you know, they've shown come from behind wins in the past and they're a team that I think will really grit their teeth and certainly not give up. It's a grand final. You know, you, you put everything out in the court for that last game and there's no second chances. Let's hope we're uh, talking tomorrow with some silverware. Most definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren.